Hey everyone, welcome to Wine Diplomat. I'm Eureka, and today we are going to blind taste one of the most famous grapes that's grown all around the world, and that is Pinot Noir. So Pinot is one of the most famous grapes for, for uh, one big reason, which is that it's a very unique grape that can actually be grown in very cold climates. So it's mo probably most famous for uh, France, or, or Burgundy uh, in particular, but it also grows in some uh, pretty warmer climates like America or even New World wines like Chile. Our, our, uh, New Zealand is, is, is coming up with amazing places that have the right climate for Pinot Noir. So with Pinot Noir, we're looking for a wine that's got like a tart raspberry or a cranberry flavor to it. Uh, generally, it's pretty smooth wine. And it won't have a lot of the, the leaves and the, the dirt and things that we call tannins that you might find in like a Cabernet or a Merlot. So Pinot Noir is a really good wine that's pretty versatile, works with a ton of different foods and a ton, ton of different social settings. So there's also some cool little tertiary flavors that you'll get like mushrooms or leather or uh or something i like to call the funk the funk man it's like it's this kind of earthy umami uh flavors that you get out of a lot of really good high-end burgundian or uh or american just like cream of the crop pinots so i'm excited i think we're going to to have a good variety of flavor profiles and we've got three wines. Uh, my wife has gone out and selected three Pinot Noirs. We have one that is under $30. We have one that is under $20. And we have one that's under $15. So a pretty good uh, spread of price ranges that's out there. And now the question is, can I pick the most expensive, least expensive, and what's in the middle? So, uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we, go, we go up and down, but that's the fun of it, right? That's the fun of it. So let's start with wine A. What is wine A? Thank you, sir. All right. So the first thing we'll do is look at color. So with Pinot Noir, uh, it tends to be kind of a, a medium... Uh, op opaqueness like you sometimes you you can see straight through it and sometimes it's pitch black depending on who's making it but uh, this t is on the darker side it's more of a kind of a ruby garnet not as purple as like a merlot or a cabernet it's a nice like fire engine red yeah on the nose uh tart like tart raspberries uh yeah like not quite like there's no cola there's no wood there's no it smells really good though alcohol wise i guess i didn't i get, didn't bring that up right and that's kind of one of the reasons we're drinking wine in the first place uh alcohol wise this tends to be more of a medium bodied uh, grape. I think this particular Pinot is a little elevated though. It it's smells a little hot and the legs are a little thick. So I think this actually has probably closer to like 14% alcohol, which is maybe a little elevated for, for Pinot Noir, but it is California we're talking about. So I expect there to be a little bit more punch to it. Mm -hmm. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like a good opportunity to like and subscribe this video before we get into it. Make sure, hit that little like button, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. Okay, I'll go back to it. Let's dig, dig back in, man. Okay. Mm. Very deep, very deep uh, flavor here. It has that tart raspberry almost like, and like a kind of a like a blackberry tartness to it as well 
um, almost no tannins, but I get a good acidity to it. It has an elevated acidity. So uh, the reason we would want that is, you know, when you're pairing it with a food and, and it needs to cut through a cheese or cut through a sauce, that acidity is going to kind of be a, a good palate cleanser in between your bites of food. I think this is a very well-made uh, Pinot Noir. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, balance too. We, we haven't really talked about balance, and that's what I love about a wine like this is that very long finish to it. I still taste the fruit. Um, it, it, it backed up what I smelled on it about the kind of the raspberries and cranberries, but it's not just fruit. It's not sweet. It's not bitter or not too bitter. It's just like, it's like a symphony playing a lot of notes at the same time. That's why I'm taking a long time with this wine because I, 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 man, if they're all this good, I'm going to have a problem because they're all, this is really, really good. I get a little bit of that mushroom. Uh, uh, and the leather, but uh, there's like a little bit of, mm, mm. this is going to be a good one. And it's probably wine that's going to get, they've all been open about, I don't know, 30 minutes. We, we poured them. This is actually wine that some of that alcohol is going to dissipate. Some of that fruit's going to pop out a little bit more in about another half an hour. So that's good. Um, I'm not going to make a call on, on what I think, if it's the least expensive or most expensive yet. It's very good, though. I like wine A. Let's do wine B. Ah, this is, this, if they're all this good, I'm in, I'm in trouble. Thank you, Josh. All right, so this one is considerably lighter in color. This is, uh, the other one was, was it like a, like a, true garnet birthstone where it's like deep dark where this one is um much lighter and a little bit more opaque splitting hairs though this would be more ruby birthstone um where it's that little bit of pinkness and okay way brighter like strawberry jam uh, uh, uh strawberry preserves um yeah, like uh, raspberry, like blue raspberry, uh, like, like um, you know those popsicles? You know those popsicles that are like the blue raspberry push pops? That's what I get, that's what I get out of it. <laughs> smells are so experiential, right? Like, you know, like how do I describe what it smells like? Uh, hopefully you've gone through the same experiences I have. That's why my wife is so good at it because she's, she cooks so much, and so she can pick out these little flavors, and she teaches me uh, all these little smells. But, yeah, way more, uh, this is darker, this is bright, bright red. Like, I can almost envision the, the, the raspberries, like, bright red in my mouth here. Yeah, all right, it's still confirmed. This is a little higher... Uh, acidity to it, a little brighter. Um, this also, um, not as long of a finish. Like it's almost, it's already kind of, kind of uh, going away. It's not bad. It's just different. It's just a, a compl like so. It's the same grape, completely different uh, taste profile. This is way more like bright hot where this is a little bit of darkness and a little bit of uh complexity the the, the mushrooms and the earth and uh, like the leather this doesn't have that this doesn't have the 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 meaty umami uh mushroomy this doesn't have any of that it's just good fruit you know like this i think would be good with like meats like i would like it's a pinot noir but i think it has elevated alcohol i think it would go good with like thinly cut steaks or uh, uh, pork chops. It's something that's like not filet mignon or porterhouse steak. This I would not do with this. This I think is a little lighter. I mean, I would do like chicken salads or like a, like a grilled chicken cut up on a salad and maybe it has a little bit of like raisins or cranberries or dried cranberry in there. Um, this would go well with that. This is going to also just be good by itself. 
But, um, okay, I think this one for sure is a little less expensive than that. But just different taste profile. Uh, it's good, just different. All right, C. Let's do C. I think you, sir. Hmm. So this is dark like the first one. Let me get in here. Okay, okay. Now we're getting now we're getting uh, a little bit of that funk again, right? It's the funk, the folk. This has that like. I mean, I could smell it right off of it. It's got a little bit of that Burgundian, just earthy mushroom, uh, or like uh, like if you plant so like the soil. I mean, you can kind of in a good way. It kind of has that like. That like really good, just kind of earthy smell to it. Yeah. Now the the this doesn't have the strawberries like this one. It's kind of more cranberry, just tartness. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is on that deeper, like like a like a blackberry or a raspberry. Not so much the strawberry. Not so much the cranberry. All of these have really good acidity this may be a little higher in acidity a little brighter where this is now we're deep or darker in that range it's not just like astringent as, as soon as it gets on my tongue it's not super palate cleansing this would go well with your your sauces and your cheeses uh, and it's it's backing up the flavors backing up raspberry cranberry um, no strawberry decent acidity to it and that it's not overbearing but you get that like truffles like 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 shaving tr like high-end truffles or like a like mushrooms or like a oh, like a sauteed mushroom yeah man this is pretty good i think this is also very well made um it's good balance like I just keep wanting to dive back into, like, especially A uh, and C here. I just want to keep going back to it, but but it's the lingering flavor in between. Uh, this is this is hard. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough, especially A and C. They're very, very, very similar. Um, so if I had to pick, so I think I think A, A or C are the most expensive wines. I think... Uh, if I if I take A here and look at it again, yeah, just this deep, dark. Oh, look at this, and then as it as it as it reaches out, because what you also want to look at is the edge of the of the glass here. Um, they're not very old. Um, I, I don't think any of these wines are more than a few years old. Because I'm looking at you would kind of see the the color fades as it as it reaches the edge of the wine and an older wine will give like a brown color to it as it's oxidized in the bottle. These are all young. I think these are all very, very young and fresh. Let's go back to C and I'll kind of show you a little difference there. I mean, it's a, it's a little lighter. Uh, it's more opaque. I can see right through it. I'm trying to see again. I don't think this is an old wine. I think this is, this is young. So some of those tertiary flavors will will come out as it ages to more of the mushroom. Hmm. And then for clarity, I'll just kind of here's here's B again, very light, very opaque. Uh, not that that matter. No, that's not like a quality determinant. It's just what I can see, and it kind of everything together, the the look, the smell, and the taste combined for a, for a totality here. So. Well, mm, let's get to it. I actually think I think A is the most expensive wine. I haven't gone back to it since tasting this. Mm. 
Yeah. This has the most complexity of all three of them. Now that I've had the other two, I do, th I think, A, I think, <laughs> that's why it's hard. Okay, I think A is the most expensive wine. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it hands down. Um, B's got, got, it's just so different. It's just so different than the other two. But yeah, A has all the hallmarks I'm looking for. What I think, when I've tasted most, some of the most expensive wines that I've ever had, it's, the check marks, long finish, you know, uh, good balance, all of those hallmarks. This is this is probably my this is my favorite of the three. I think this is the the most well made wine, and I think it's the most expensive. B is a is good. It's it's a good wine. There's no bad ones on the panel today. I just think it's it's a little lighter. It's a little fruitier it's not as complex it um i i think it's it's a good if this if this ends up being i think it's the least expensive i'm gonna put it there i think it is the least expensive but it's i'm sure I'm, I'm sure this is a really good bargain I, I don't know what the price is but i think it's under 15 bucks and if that's true i think it's a really good deal if this ends up being the most expensive wine i'm uh, uh i think it's got a little bit of room to grow but we'll see. That's part of it too. Is we're gonna find out in just a second. I think C is the the one that's in the middle. Yeah, I think I think I'm good with this. I think A is the most expensive and my favorite. Uh, C is the one that's in the middle, and then B, out of these three, I think is the least expensive. Um, but here we go. Let's see. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Okay, <laughs> here comes, here comes the time of truth. Josh, my friend, can you hand me? Uh, do you have, what? Which one do you have in your hand? Yeah, you, you have A in your hand. Let's do that last. Let's you do that last. Three. I will do B. Let's do B. Because I thought it was the least expensive. <clears throat> And the reason is for that. Like I'm, I'm when I'm kind of thinking about uh, what's. Oh, thank you, sir. When I'm thinking about what's the, what's the, the finish, right? How long that finish is going? Um, the 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 balance of flavors and aromas and 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 even the intensity, the intensity of the aromas and the flavors and how they play with each other, uh, and just you know what I think. Well, here it goes. Uh, <laughs> B was, I thought it was the least expensive, and it is Block 9 Pinot Noir at a Cadence Vineyards in California. So, so the AOC here is California. So this is a, it's a good opportunity to talk about what that means. So if it just says California on the label, that means that they've blended from, they could have Mendocino, Santa Barbara, uh, Sonoma. It could be all of those things combined. So by law, you can't. You can't say it's, you know, from this area or that area. If it's a mix of either, you just have to say California. So that's not a good, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, but th I, I thought this was phenomenal for, uh, I'm, Block 9 is going, it is probably the least expensive that we have. This runs you like $13.99 at, at most wine shops. Um, but a, a solid wine. I, I I give it a I give it I give it a clap. It's a good wine and it's a great value and I think it's it's one that uh, every Pinot lover should at least try and and have it. It has qualities of of French Burgundian kind of like coat to uh, like kind of like a village wine you would call it in French. It's a good table wine, it's phenomenal, and I dig it. All right. Um, Let's do C. <laughs> I'll move this off camera here. So that's that. 
C, I think, is it, a, a, another phenomenal wine. Uh, it and A, very, very similar, right? I just split hairs here. I just think that C doesn't have the level of complexity and level of, of balance that A had from splitting hairs. <clears throat> C is none other than Cambria. 2018 Pinot Noir from Santa Maria Valley and says Julia's Vineyard. Uh, so uh, this, uh, it might be a single vineyard. Uh, let's take a look. Cambria State, Julia's Vineyard. Yeah. Uh, so it says it's a single vineyard California wine out of Santa Maria Valley. Santa Maria Valley is um, kind of south in... in um, I guess uh, Santa Maria is about 90 miles north of, of L.A., so you're still in Southern California. And th what's cool about Santa Maria Valley is it's one of the only places, or it's, it's situated in a place where most of the mountains in California run north to south. But in Santa Maria Valley, they get good fog. It's a really good, like, uh, cool climate because that fog and the mountains actually run east to west uh, somewhere in that in that uh, in that area so pretty cool I, I thought this was I mean really complex good aroma to it good you get the raspberry you get the cranberry I gotta take another swig of this it's it's really good um, this is the, the I'm assuming this is going to be the middle of the road because this is like Eighteen ninety nine. It's under twenty bucks. It's a so I mean, I would put this up against uh, what you get in Burgundy for twenty bucks. Yeah, I mean, uh, Burgundy's like the the king of the hill, right? All the all the wine uh, aficionados about Pinot Noir, they're just like French Burgundy. Ah, oh, so amazing. Uh, I think this is a for tw for uh, Cambrai's what eighteen ninety nine. I I think this is a good. A substitute for that from California. It's got the complexity. It's got, but it's got a little bit of that California panache to it. So, yeah, I like it. I think it's phenomenal. So let's put, let's put block nine here. We'll put Cambry here, and then our final, our final wine. Oh, all right. Here it comes. I, I think I got it though. I, block nine. Uh, good but inexpensive. Cambria is about eighteen ninety nine, so I think the one that's under thirty bucks is A. Can I get A, please? Thank you, sir. All right. Let's see what happened here. Wine A, I thought was very very well made. I thought was um, good complexity, right? check boom it's got great balance it's got fruit it's got acid it's got all these things together uh living harmoniously check and so uh there's my little baby's off in the, in the van he, he's ready for the expensive stuff too you know later on in life of course but uh we love we love little baby valtteri he's the man um it's time for him to get his bottle papa's got his bottles so let's see what do we got what do we got uh oh i don't know Wine A was Cross Barn Pinot Noir from Paul Hobbs from Anderson Valley, California. All right, man. All right. This, this right here, this right here. Yeah, this is, this is what I think if you were to show off what uh, American Pinot Noir has potential to be for for especially for 30 bucks this is something it's a special bottle that would be worth it paul hobbs is a internationally known winemaker he's one of the 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 true pioneers of of multiple different areas and and different grape varieties you know he's not just a one-hit wonder paul hobbs uh cross barn they do a chardonnay in this series paul hobbs does a Cabernet Sauvignon in this series, and this is the Pinot Noir from, from Anderson Valley. Oh, and you, so what's cool about Anderson Valley is we talked about Santa Maria Valley being very south, almost close to uh, uh, L.A., right, as far south as you get. Well, Anderson Valley is almost the opposite. It's like the top, it's like the most northernmost California wine country that you're going to find. But Anderson Valley, very nice cold climate, 
uh, just deep, dark, rich fruit that you get out of this for a very cold climate, which is where Pinot Noir thrives. So, uh, man, it, it has all of the all of the hallmarks that I'm looking for in a very well made, expressive Pinot Noir, uh, and you can get it for for about twenty nine ninety nine uh, to thirty four ninety nine, depending on where you're getting it. But it's just it's just heavenly. It's it's the bomb. Ah, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So, uh, let's we'll 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 rearrange these. I've got block nine. It, it might have been our least expensive, but I think it's a very good value. Block nine out of California, mixing different areas together. The Cambria single vineyard out of Santa Maria Valley. I thought this was for eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, buddy, it's got a little bit of that complexity that you don't normally get with a, with an inexpensive wine. It's it's kind of a good um, way to get into some of those tertiary leather and the, the mushrooms and stuff. But the full-blown, man, I'm even going to pour more in this glass. You know what's up. You know what's up. This is what we're drinking off camera here. Uh Cross Barn was, was everything I was hoping for today and more it has the funk in a good way it's got the leather the mushrooms the cranberry the the, the raspberry it's got all of that and more and it lingers for for miles and miles and miles so uh yeah it's it's the bomb and, and pinot noir man pinot noir is just a wonderful grape uh, you know to to be fair i'm thinking about it now I, I can't go without saying this is that if you're a cabernet drinker if you're a merlot drinker i think this is one of the the Pinot Noirs that you might like because I haven't verified, but to, yeah, 14.1% alcohol here. Uh, you've got 14% alcohol in the Cambria and a little lighter on the Block 9. We're at 13.5%, but that can even be up by one. So California, known for that kind of bigger, bolder style, uh, comes across, but all these have a little bit of that, uh, especially uh, uh, A and, and C here, have a little bit of that uh that tertiary like just that little bit of of uh that je ne sais quoi right that's something special that these will have that wine lovers go crazy for so from all of us here at wine diplomat for my baby valtteri for my loving wife who picked all these wines trying to stump me you almost got me you all you got me last week you almost got me you didn't this week i think i nailed it uh for for all of us for josh killing it my man, you're killing it behind the camera. Uh, again, I am Eureka. We say thank you. If you hit that like button, if you hit that subscribe button, we're going to thank you even more. Come have a glass with us, man. We do wine every single week. You, you're a part, you're the biggest part of what we do here. So from all of us, we say thank you at Wine Diplomat. We're going to cheers. You, you know we're drinking this off camera, guys. Cheers a glass to you and yours, man. From all of us at Wine Diplomat, we say thank you, and see you next week. Thank you, sir. That's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you want. Josh, what do you think, man? That was good. We just gotta rework it. Okay. Yeah, editing ed the editing job is gonna be crazy this week. It won't be too tough.